Both the Chinese traders presented themselves with large turbans on their heads and thick beards and mustaches on their faces. Their faces were not clearly visible in the light of the dim lamp that was burning in the palace loft at that time. Couldn't even figure out what they were. The doubts that had arisen in Kundeva's heart grew stronger. The wise Amadarasi said, This light is not enough to see the silk paddas, light a big lamp. She ordered the servant who brought the merchants. I'll go and send a good light. After saying that, Madhuran Thakdavar left the place. Champion Mathavi also went with him. After they had gone, Kuntave said to the Chinese traders, Sir! Why are you in such a hurry? Shouldn't you bring your goods tomorrow and display them? Have you come late at night? She said. Princess! I am sorry. It has been many days since we came to Tanjore. No matter how hard we tried, we could not get into the palace and see ourselves. The next day, the boat leaves from Nagapatanam. We also have to leave on it. That is why we are in such a hurry," said one of the Chinese traders. Even though his voice was a bit strange, the people there were amazed that his spoken Tamil was good. Chinese trader. You speak Tamil very well said Kundave. It has been some time since I came to this Chola country for business. So I learned to speak Tamil a little. I like Tamil and Tamil Nadu, said the merchant. Then why are you in such a hurry to leave your country now? Shouldn't you leave at least until the consecration? What's the rush? If the ship that departs the day after tomorrow is missed, then you never know when the ship will leave. As before, Ships do not leave Naga very often. Why is that? Don't you know the reason, goddess? Sea travel is not as easy as it used to be. It is not safe. Pirates are numerous. Mad warriors from Arab countries board ships and roam the high and low seas. They lie in wait on the shores, even near the harbors. When they see merchant ships, they approach. They come and sail. They make war with fury and kill all the people on the ships and take away the goods. Because of this, nowadays the merchant ships cannot leave alone. Ten ships, twenty ships have to leave together. If the ships that leave tomorrow and the day after are gone, how long will we have to wait for the next one? Don't know. Goddesses, make up your mind and look at the silk bracelets we've brought. Saying this, the Achenese merchant began to separate the bundle he had brought. Another one also unwrapped the bundle. Merchants! It is no use opening up your shop now. The quality of your leather goods cannot be ascertained at night. We have not brought here anything worth paying for your leather goods," said the youngest brat. The merchant who spoke first immediately stood up as if greatly astonished, and with outstretched arms, said, Princess! Shall we bid them a price? You have spoken well. If you are willing to accept and wear these sandals, shall we not be pleased to think that this is the benefit of the penance we have done in previous lives? We didn't bring these goods, we brought them as housewarming gifts. He said. Then you've come to the wrong place. None of us here have a consecration. The one who's going to be crowned is Prince Bonnie's lover. Go find him and give him your presence. No, Devi. We've come in search of the right place. Everyone says that the trick to winning the favor of Pawnee's lord is to first win the favor of the younger bratty Kundave Devi," said the Chinese merchant. Hearing this, all the ladies there laughed. Who is everyone? Where and who did you hear such a thing? Why, mother? Even in the crowd that gathered during the festival in this city today, many people spoke. They said, Brother will never knock his word. Here, listen to my friend. Ithakan, who had been idle all this time, said, Yes, princesses. It is true. Patabi Shekham to Pani's Selvar, it is like the Patabi Shekham to Kundave Prati. People were talking about it. From now on, the Chola country is going to have a women's government. It will be a good government. Again the princesses laughed uproariously. So, princesses! Be gracious and accept these consecration gifts. 
said a Chinese businessman. Accept and submit our request to Pawnee's lord. Said another trader. What is your request? What do you want to do with Pawnee's silver? Tell me first. Said Kundawai Prati. In the same way, the ships that left our country of China were coming to the Chola country without hindrance. That time is now a distant dream, Devi. We tell them the truth. It is not certain that we will bring these silk bracelets back to our country safely. Isn't it a more special thing to present to the Chola princesses than to rob the pirates of the Arabian Sea on the way? When the Chinese merchant spoke in this way, Kundave Devi's eyes, which resembled the eyes of the goddess, were widened and filled with immeasurable interest. Do you think that such a thing will be done by Pawnee's silver? Do you think that sea voyages are safe as it was in the time of Emperor Parintaka? Do you believe that the fame of Pawnee's silver will spread to the lands of Manakavaram, Maritingam, Kataram, Srivahayam, etc.? She asked. What do we only believe? All these Chola businessmen believe. Why? We went to a soothsayer a while ago. He said so too. What did he say? The astrologer said that Selvar of Pawnee will gather great fleets and cross the seas, he will eradicate the gangs of bandits, he will make sea voyages as compulsory as before, the Chola country will regain the glory it had achieved in the time of Emperor Parintaka. But the Chola princesses should not stand in the way of all this, the astrologer said. Is that all he said? Did he say any more slander about princesses? Aha! Uh -huh. Slander? Nothing like that. Devi! There can be no one in this Chola country who slanders the old Ilaya Prati and Kajumbalar Gomis. If so, only an astrologer hoping for the favor of the princesses would dare to say so. What else did the astrologer say about us? He said that the two princesses came to him a while ago and left him. He said that both of them will be married soon. Gentlemen! If not as a consecration gift, then at least accept these silk dresses as a wedding gift, said the Chinese merchant who spoke first. Hearing this, Venati said, Sister! These Chinese traders are just hustlers. Tell them to go! She said. Wait a minute Venati. Let's see how far their fuss will go. Kuntava said, Traders! Are you the ones standing on the elephant at the door of the astrologer's house? She said. Yes, Devi. The astrologer's search for the house has been immediately rewarded. We have come to know that you have come. The astrologer's prediction that we will have the privilege of meeting you today has come true. If what he said about the princess of Kajumbalar comes true, all our worries will be over. Venati repeated, Sister. Tell them to go. She said. Merchants. Are you also the ones who rode the elephants in the midst of the funeral procession? Have you not often descended from the elephants and joined the crowds? Kundave asked. Yes, goddess. We wanted to know what the people were talking about about the upcoming christening and so we entered the crowd and went around. What were the people talking about? They were talking to themselves with satisfaction about Bonnie's silver going to be crowned. No, no one is talking about the coronation itself. Then, what did the people talk about? They talked about the devotional glory of modern Dakathiva. That's a good thing to say. Flowerpot. Did you hear that? Kundave looked at Pungazali and said, What else did they say about Madurn Dakadavar? She said. They talked about Madurantha's sacrificial nature. They appreciated him for saying no kingdom even though he had the right to celebrate what he had achieved in the Chola kingdom. Really? What did they say was the reason? Madurn Dakathivar fell in love with a boatman girl and insisted that he would make her a title holder. Therefore, the minds of the petty kings in his party had already changed. The petty kings said, then there is no title for Madhurinthagar, but only for Pawnee's husband. Such people spoke. Princesses! Here is the blessed Odakara girl. If there is, we would like to give him the gift of Patada too. Punguzali now said, Devi! The princess of Kajumbalar was right. These traitors are just rascals. 
tell them to go at once. She said. Wait a minute, flower girl. What's wrong with you? They're not saying anything bad about you? Are they just praising you? Said Kundave. Let them not speak of me in praise, nor in contempt of me. Nor give me gifts. Pungaze Lai left. Amini. Are you the blessed one? Aha. The people spoke very well. Said one of the Chinese traders. What else did they talk about? Punghuali asked with a smile. When someone in the crowd said that Madurand Hakadeva had sacrificed this Chola kingdom for them, another replied, Should I sacrifice just one kingdom for Goddess Pungajali? If I had nine kingdoms, would I have sacrificed so many kingdoms? He said. I agree with what he said. Said the Chinese merchant. Bungazali said angrily, Sister. You must make arrangements to punish this preacher traitor immediately, otherwise I will tell Pani's lord and get him punished. She said. Hearing this, Madhurand Hakativar came to Manmatam. After performing the evening puja, the man with flower offerings in his hand, heard the words of Pungazali and said, There is nothing wrong in what this merchant is saying. Why should he be punished? I also approve of what he said, Pungazali said. When the Chinese merchant looked back at the man who had said this, Pung Jai Lai said, A true merchant is right. How can you approve of a pretender? Saying that, she grabbed the Chinese turban that the merchant was wearing on his head and pulled it. The turban fell down. His turban and beard all fell off his face. Sikshad Vandiyadeva's Thirumyagam presented a spectacle. Sir! Save! When Vandiyathevan tried to tie the neck of another Chinese merchant while screaming, his turban and beard and mustache fell off. Pawnee's silver appeared with a beaming face. The three women shook and laughed for a long time. After Sempi Yan Madavi came to the man's house, they told him once and laughed again. Punguzali said, Mother. When I saw them near the temple, I got suspicious. That's why I boldly asked them to come to the palace. She said. Madhurand Hakativar said, Yes, I have lost my friend. That is why I left them here and went to worship. Said. Vanati. You and I look like fools who can't figure out the disguise of men. Said Kundave. Why did they disguise themselves like this and try to deceive us? Hear that, sister. Kajumbalar Gamalam said. I have heard, Vanati. My brother is not one who knows how to pretend like this. He is learning to pretend like this and tell lies because of the sin of association. Said Kundawai Prati. Goddess. Don't blame Vandiyadeva for this. The strange idea of dressing up as Chinese traders came to me. Arom as I said. I say that it is the evil of association that caused such an idea to arise in your mind. Let it go and don't put on this kind of false pretense any more. Sister. Tyra Valovar has spoken so much about the glory of speech. But even he. Lies and lies. Beneficial Menon. Didn't he say that? When Lord Thyra Valovar sang that song, he would never have dreamed that you would use it like this. Let's leave Tyra Valu. When Rama left for the forest, didn't he use a little trick to make the people of Ayodhya? who followed him, turn back and go to Ayodhya. Didn't he tell Sumantra to get up while the people were sleeping and drive the chariot a short distance towards Ayodhya and then drive it towards the banks of the Ganges? Brother! I am very happy if you follow Rama in all things. Let him go. What is the good thing that has come of you in this false guise? Will you tell me? Kundave asked. We were able to sneak into a crowd of citizens and wander around and learn their true thoughts. Kundave said with some interest, What have you learned about the human mind brother? She asked. In any case, after the consecration ceremony, my friend and I will definitely leave for Elam. After our work there we intend to go to many other countries beyond the seas. We don't know whether we will return alive or leave our lives on the battlefield at our destinations and shoot for the hero's paradise. 
We have therefore hurried after them to request that you all remain with us till we depart, and bid us goodbye. Or we don't know whether we will leave our lives on the battlefield in the destination and shoot for the heroic heaven. We have therefore hurried after them to request that you all remain with us till we depart, and bid us goodbye. Or we don't know whether we will leave our lives on the battlefield in the destination and shoot for the heroic heaven. We have therefore hurried after them to request that you all remain with us till we depart, and bid us goodbye. When Pani Selvar was saying this, Kundave Devi's eyes were filled with tears. Bunguzali said in a soft voice, I don't know why they have created war. Shouldn't people be happy and love each other? She said. Daughter. Not like that. As long as there is a world, there will be no war. Paramashiva and Parmswari had to fight. There are some people born to establish Dharma in the world. They have to fight. Everyone was amazed when they heard what Shiva Bhakta Shuromani and Paramasadu Sempiyan Madhavi said.